Hi guys, I'm Scott Johnson. Great to be here in the Photographer Academy in, in Barrie. We're going to be doing some album design with Fundy. We shot a wedding um, back in April at Braxford Park. This is going to be the most amazing wedding and I'm going to go through my workflow about how we go about pre-designing our wedding spreads. So basically, we're picking the images that go into the album because we think they're going to look best. We used to do a way where they'd pick um, their own images, but we found that this is a better way to upsell wedding albums and at the end of the day, get a better result. So we're going to be going through that. I'll be spreading my workflow and um, how we do it. So what I've done here, this is the, the first screen you see when you open up Fundy software. So you can see here at the top, we have four little shortcuts. This is the album designer. This is wall art. This is the uh, blog collage, which is really, really good if you're doing a lot of blogging. And this is the image brander, which again has saved me countless hours on drag and dropping my logo into Photoshop. This is worth the money alone. Um, but today we're going to be going through a wedding album. So there's two ways of importing your images. There's the Add Photos link down here, which will just open up your, um, your browser and you pick the, the folder the images are in and it'll just bring them in. If you're, you know, have two screens, you can just drag and drop. So click the, the images and drag them into the bottom here, which I've already done. So what we do is we go up to uh, the album and new album. So up here is where we have all of the album partners in that fund the offer. So you can see there are many, many, many. So no matter who you're using for your album, you can have, you can use them. It's fantastic. Uh, I use Graphic Studio. So we click Graphic Studio and go next. And here are all of the books that Graphic Studio offer. So we scroll down here and you can see exactly what they offer. We're a studio that does probably 80% uh, Young Book. So we'll do one of those today. So we'll click on Young Book for Europe. Now you can favorite that if you wish. So you can hit the heart and that just remember your choice for next time. So we'll just leave it there and you hit on next. And here you're getting your face with choices. So these are all in centimeters. So 20, 20, 20 by 30, 25, 25. Um, the Graphic Studio do three sizes of Young Books. They do a 40 by 30, which is, which is huge. Um, we do a lot of the 25, 35s, and we do only landscape albums, which is this one here. So again, if you're gonna do lots, you could just hit the favorite button and move on to the next one. If you want a cover, you can pick your cover here. Crystal Glance covers are fantastic. Uh, I don't personally put Crystal Glance covers on my albums. I just use leather with, the, with writing Awesome Ennoblement. So I just hit basic cover and now I'll just drag that into there. So this is what we selected. It's just reminding you exactly what we've done here. So we're using the Funny Direct Album, Graphic Studio, Young Book, the size, and our basic cover. And then down here, you can just literally, ju I just call it album every time. Create album. So this now brings you into the main workflow of the, of the design software. So this is a spread. So imagine the center of the page is running down here. We'll go through that in a second. So at the bottom here, I have all of my images. You just scroll through and you can see we have all the images that I've pre-selected. The reason we do a pre-selection is purely because the, the couple have chosen us to take their wedding images and we feel that we can do a better job without bragging or, you know, it's their wedding album. They will get a chance to prove it, but if we're choosing the pictures, it actually works better for us. We can sell a better product and we can also upsell spreads. Couples come in and they have 20 spreads uh, with us, but we average 25 to 30 spreads that leave the studio, so they are going to be buying um, be buying more. So this is the way that I do it. Um, I just drag and drop images up into here. What you can also do is an auto design, which is really, really awesome. So basically, you scroll up, we have all our images in here. So we have an album, uh, mix ratios, you can change your aspect ratio or match original, which is what I want to do. The entire collection, and here you can actually um, tell it how many spreads you want, how many images per spread. So you hit design, and it's done. Quick as that, take them two seconds. Let's just, you know, just go to the pub, it's brilliant. Um, it's, it's phenomenal. So you can do it that way and it, you can go scroll all the way down and here we have a complete wedding album that's taken me about two minutes to design. Um, I like a little bit more control 
over the images. Um, you can go through and four star and five star them so it knows the ones you're going to want to print. You can really go into the software um, and tell it the ones you want double page spread. You can group images together so it knows on the auto design the best way of doing it. But as you can see, we have a fully functioning wedding album here that took two minutes. And if I was really lazy, we'd send that to print, but we're not going to do that. So we're going to um, we'll do it the way we normally do it. So we can, go, um, we can go straight into clear, and that will just disappear it back to as we were. So this is the way that I do it. So basically, I've pre-designed this. I've gone into um, Bridge, and I've gone through, and I've picked the ones that I think will best suit the wedding day. So what I try and do is I try and tie in detail and venue. So we just basically, by a simple click, you click on the image, and you drag it in, and it will just load the spread up uh, from there. You can double-click on the spread, and you see exactly um, you know, where the bleed line is, where the safety line is, exactly where the center of the book is going to be. And it's in here where you click on layouts and you're given a lot of different choices as well. So you don't have to have the one that is suggested to you. I like to open with a double page spread. So again, we'll click back on double page spread and you just drag and drop into here. At the bottom, what we have is a little bit of a uh, you can zoom in and out, and then if you want, you can rotate the images if you wish. But we don't rotate too many images, so we try and keep it, again, as clean as possible. This little exclamation mark down here is basically telling you that you should probably resize the image in Photoshop. So it's telling you that you need, you need to have um, it be a lot wider on the pixel count. Personally, I've never had a problem. Um, with the cameras that I use, to, I never have a problem with the upscaling. But it, it, yeah, it's fine, so you can take it or leave it. If you're going to go to a really, really big double page spread album, uh, like a 40 by 30, you might want to look at it, but a 25, 35's never had a problem at all. So we're going to link these together in from here. So we're going to click all the detail shots. We're going to scroll around and see what else we have. And that's absolutely fine in from here. So we're just going to link all the detail shots in together and drag it in. So basically it's given me a lovely little spread here, but again, you don't have, you're not forced to use what it gives you. So basically you double click, click on the layout tab here, and again, you can literally go through and pick the ones that you wish. So that one's gonna work quite well. If you wanna drag some images about, again, absolutely fine. You click on the image that you, um, you wanna move, and you drag it across and it changes in from there. It's very, very simple. And again, you can go through and if you want that one to be a little bit bigger or you want to bring that one down or you want to change it around or hit your space bar, that will just flip the image around. It's really, really quick and really, really simple. But we actually like the way we had it the first time. So we'll go back into that and swap that around. So what we're going to do in this one is we actually prefer this is an upright, so you can again you can select the images within the layout that it gives you. So at the minute we have a three to two ratio. Click on that horizontal. Oh, vertical even. And again, so now you can see that we've got all the image that we want is nicely in the frame without any cropping whatsoever. So the more I'm doing this, we're just going to take that one out. I'm not a fan of the uh, the flowers. Again, use very, and it will just it will just resync the spread to what you've got left. And again, this one we want to go horizontal or original spread. Ooh, so you can see you can change everything in from here, and if you wish, you bring it around over there. So we just hit next. Go back to view, which takes us back into our, our spread. So we're just going to go through again. So we've got a little bit of the, the detail shots. So we're, we're telling, again, we're telling the story. This is what we'll take when we go around and just photograph while the bride's getting, you know, finishing putting their dress and hanging it up, and the guys are just arriving. So we don't go too crazy. So we go around and make sure we get all details photographed. So we have the bridal preparation just down here and a dress hanging up and the florist arriving. So what we're going to do, we're just going to, we could probably actually bring that into here because again, it's a part of the story. And we'll just change it a little bit more. Again, we're just trying to find the right layout. We'll just get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. 
So we're just going to keep the details here. So this, is, this is what's so great. If you don't like it, you just, you just change it. So now we have that, and then we can actually sync this image, the flowers, in with the venue. The space bar, just to flip it around, and that actually works quite nicely in from there. So now we're going into the bride getting ready. So again, space bar it, switch it around. Double click, make sure everything's where we want it to be. You might actually, so you can double, you can zoom in uh, from here and come back. What we have in uh, Fundy software as well is a really cool skin softener. So this is before the makeup's actually gone on, so we don't want to get too close at this stage. So what you can actually do is just hit clear skin. And then it just, it will, you probably can't see it in here, but it just, it's a really good skin softening so, uh, bit of software. Much, much better than what I found in Lightroom, and it works really, really well. So we'll just double click back out of here. So that's that spread done. Back into view. And we'll just go around and we'll just tie everything in. Any more of her getting ready? There is. So we'll hold the Apple key down, click. And drag them in. Again, we can probably get rid of the dress that's hanging up. We can tie everything in. I actually quite like that as a shot. Into there. Back into view. So now we're going to focus on Dan, the groom, and his prep. So these are his nice pair of the boots that he um, decided to buy for the wedding. So we could make them a big feature. He spent a lot of money on those, so we could make it a feature. Personally, I think that's probably a little bit too big. Just going to double click on the spread, uh, flip it round, drag that onto there, drag that down, and again. So you can see on the spread here, we have a little bit of the side of the, um, the bottom of the table, the glass. We just double click, click on the spanner, and just zoom in a little bit more, just so we're going to lose that. And again, the really good thing is you have um, the crosshairs so you can see exactly where the centre of the, of the page is going to be. Go into view. So that's that. I'm not going to use that one. We're just going to finish his portraits off. Again, a little bit too much table at the bottom here. Double click. Make it a little bit bigger. So there. So a nice little spread here, nice little collage. Three images. So now in the software like I do, you kind of get to know what spreads it might give you. And eventually you'll have your favourite. So this I took this as a set which would work really well uh, on the spread. So one, two, three. And you can just fill them about and get the best uh, the best spread possible. And then double page spread, possibly, of the guys walking up. Let's see how it looks. Not bad. We'll keep it there. So I'm just double clicking to make sure we have no uh, faces going through the centre of the, the spread. I'm not a fan of putting anyone's face down the centre of the image because I just don't think it should be. I'm OK with shoulders, but anything near, near to the ears, we don't, we don't tend to do that. So we're going back, um, so we got another image, this is what my second shooter, Karen, would have taken whilst I was in, because it imports into date uh, and time captured, so, and, or the numbers, sorry, that uh, we've called them, so this is when Karen would have been doing detail shots. So what I could do, I could leave that image out, or I could fill it into here. So it's just to show you how easy it is to drop an image in you've missed or forgotten about, double click, drag it up, so you can even put it underneath there, or underneath here, or in the middle or to the side, so it will go exactly where you want it to go. So we can probably leave that in there and just bring her back up again. So bride getting ready, front and back shot. That's actually not too bad. I might just change that and make it a little bit more of a letterbox crop. So we can make, oops. Edit, undo. That's all right, 
So we're going through. So then whilst we've got that, we could actually... Are we going to put this in a bit later? I know there's some pictures coming up. So this is, again, something that Karen's taken whilst I'm in with the bride, of people just arriving, having fun. So I'm just going to go around, holding my Apple key, and making sure we've got any more. So we have a nice spread. We try and average about three to four images per spread. Um, but this works really, really well because... This will make a lovely collage in the wedding album itself. So we've, I don't know how many we've got there. We'll just drag all of those 17 images go in. Bang, there's a collage done. The days of doing layers in Photoshop are long gone. This is a one, cl one click, done. Simple as that. No one's going through the center. What we do is just, we just go through and make sure that no one's got their heads cut off, which they haven't back into view. So the, again, this doesn't really fit in with here, but what we can do, you click your little navigation button on there and you can drag and place that spread anywhere within the album that you wish. So we've done it now while it's in our mind's eye and we'll just kind of go back and check that out and put it in the right place once we get to it. So we're going to go back into here. So the bride is getting her dress put on. We can tie in with that shot there, which works nicely. Scrolling down. So again, we have our bridal portraits. Bring that up. Bring that in again. We can put an image in the white space here. Um, less is more. I don't want the images to be, the spreads to be too image heavy. Again, one, it helps us sell more spreads. And two, your eye doesn't want to be too confused when it goes through the album. You want to go straight to where it wants to go. Um, we don't want to have you open up and look at messy spread for collages like we just did with all the wedding guests arriving. It actually works great. But on this spread here, if you're putting in 10, 15 images, you, you, just, you don't want to see that. You want to go straight to the straight to the shots that you want to that you want to go wow at. So she's ready. In comes Dad. So again, we took a nice little collage. You can see the four images we have here. I might not use all four, but we'll put them in and we'll just see what happens. So we can bring all. Well, four shots from coming in, and then a fifth. Go into the software, drag it around from there. So again, we can kind of bring that into there, flip it round, and again, you can either go into the ratio and change it, or click on the image, you get the little navigation box, and you drag it down, so it makes it exactly where you want it to be. So if you want to make these any bigger, again, same thing, drag it across. And again, from there, we'll just make sure that they're in the right order. I might change these a little bit purely because we don't want the centre going down through Dad's face. Probably fit that round into there. Done. Into view. Next spread. So we have a portrait. So this is where we kept the image back. So we can either kind of bring the image of her dress hanging up and tie it in nicely to now the fact that she's got it on and bring it in. So again, we'll just go in and make that a little bit bigger. And then we'll just rotate that round so everything's straight. I'm really funny when it comes to straight lines. It has to be straight and it has to be perfect. People don't build wonky houses for us to take photographs of the door frames or wonky. It has to be straight. That's just me. So scrolling back, going back, going back, all the way back. We've done, these shots are in so we know that this is in because it's at number one next to it. We've got all the way around now. So she's in her dress and basically we can now bring in the portraits and the group shots of the bride and her bridal party. We can now also go all the way back to the image of the two flower girls we saw earlier, which is here. And again, we can bring that in into there. Not too happy with that spread, so we'll just bring it around and we'll probably change that. So vertical, one to one or original, and that will fit it up quite nicely. And we'll zoom in, and there's your spread. 
So again, you can go in and do all the skin softening from here and have a closer look at the image by double clicking the image itself. One click. And we'll zoom it in. Same for here. Done. View next spread. Scrolling down. All the way back. So here we go. So again, we took these. So this is the bridesmaids and the flower girls walking in. So again, we can leave it like that, which actually works quite well. We're just going to go in and make sure that our little page boy isn't in the center of the spread. So we can either leave it like that or we just switch it around and move it to one side so the center of the spread's coming down here, which actually was the order they came in. So I'm happy with that. And again, with the benefit of having two photographers, uh, Karen took the one on the left, I took this one bring it in and that actually works quite nicely as a spread there so you can see his reaction as she walked through that door exactly as it happened. It's a really good use of a second photographer. Karen is worth her weight in gold. So again, we'll just make that a little bit straighter. Done. Next spread. So, I've, again, we've got in and done a pre-design, so I've got in and made these black and white. Uh, the couple don't like it in black and white. It's absolutely fine. We can go back and change it. The good thing about this software is it, a change is no more than two or three minutes. Just redesign and resync the file uh, into colour and just drop it back in. So, again, we, what we'll do, I like the way this spread works. We're just going to make sure that it is in uh, order. So walking up the aisle, kissing, reading, reading. That's fine. Next spread. Again. Done. Next spread. One, two. Done. Happy with that. Again. So we're thinking, thinking about our, the benefit of shooting, uh, doing a pre-design is you start getting your head around shooting for the product and shooting for the album. So basically I've taken these images knowing this is how I'm going to lay the album out. Um, one of the bride, one of the groom in the same spot and we'll just literally go in and make sure we'll fill that up quite nicely. So there, next spread, big group shot, double page spread every day of the week. So again, we can leave it there or we can make it bigger. Now, obviously, on a big group shot like this, someone is going to be down the cruise. You can't help that. Um, so we just try and make sure it's for as least amount of people as possible. I put this image in. I actually quite like this image, but I don't think it's going to fit anywhere. So we might... We'll have a little play with this and see how it works. So it's a nice set of images, but these, this image here doesn't match this image here, so we're probably going to delete both of those and not put them in. Just because you put them into the album software doesn't mean I'm going to use them. So we'll just carry on with the spread, and we'll go down into here. Make you a little bit bigger. So again, we're just going through. I actually quite like this one too. We'll probably put that one in, yeah. So again, shooting for the product, knowing the spread. We know that even though, double click the image, we've got an awful lot of headspace up in here. I know that the spread is gonna come right about here. So a lot of people, when they see their proofs, are saying, there's an awful lot of space. I'm like, yeah, there's a reason for that. Uh, which is why, again, we started doing a pre-design. So we know we're exactly into here. So again, this is just guess. So while I'm out doing the bride and groom portraiture, Karen goes around and does all the guest shots. And this is where we load the spreads up. So we might put, again, 17, 20 pictures in because it just kind of works. So when people say you've got 190 pictures in the wedding album, yeah, we do, but you know what? It works when you're doing a spread like this. So they can t the couple can turn the page. And near enough, all their wedding guests are there. So we have 22 images on that spread. Click onto here, and there it is.
So again, you can, this is, this is the kind of spread where a couple might say, oh, you know what, uh, these are our best friends. Can we have this, this particular shot bigger? Or these are too similar, can we, get, can we get rid of one? So we just double click on the spread. These are very similar. We'll get rid of that, click on it once, and it's gone. And that will just readjust the spread to, so everything is perfect. So that one doesn't fit now, we'll get rid of that and take that one off. And within the spread, you can kind of go through and change it all about. Very, very clever. So that's the guest page done. We're now going to go through and pick the group shots. Again, we don't take too many group shots. We try and keep it to around 10 to 12, sometimes 15, depends on how big the families are. So we're just going to go around and pick the formal shots. So I don't mix the formal shots with the second shooter shots because it looks a little bit weird. So I'm just going to go around and find the shots that I took, which is pretty much there. Drag those in. So again, weddings, as you know, can be a political minefield as far as families are concerned. So I try and keep every group shot the same size. Um, otherwise, you'll get complaints. Well, why is my family bigger than, 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 than hers? So keep everything the same size. You've got no arguments in. I'm just going through, and again, we're just changing things up. I might actually switch that round, the best man. So we'll tie this up later on. I'm just going to go, this is just a, showing you how we do things. So this is now I'm going through looking for the, what Karen took. So the second angle of the shot, which is that one there, that one there. So Karen, or a good second shooter, should be trained that when my or the main camera goes down, hers comes up. So she's getting the little reactions between them and the wedding guests, which is exactly what this is here. So we'll just change that around a little bit. It's just a nice, it helps balance the two spreads out quite nicely. Scrolling down, we can actually probably bring that one in as well. And because that's bringing to there, we'll just change the spread round. like that. Perfect. So we can watch some more guest images here. So we, we can go back and just bring those into this spread here. Let's add them in. I'm happy with that. Next spread. Again, to this double page. That's them walking into the wedding breakfast is it to be, at, be announced as the bride and groom. So again, we've got a little issue with the centre of the line coming through the groom. So we'll just do a double click and just make that split go between the two of them. So speech is again another really good multiple spread. I don't know how many we've put in here. So I've just gone through in the pre-design and pick the best reactions, people speaking, people looking. Now, th these were great speeches. They were funny. They were, uh, they were emotional. It was, it was a real mix. It was fantastic. So I've just gone through, double click. So we can see here, we've got some great reactions. Maybe we don't want that one on there. We probably want to change that to dad. But again, the benefit of this software, you can just drag and change anything you want. You don't like it, you just move it. It's really, really, really cool. So that's that into there. So after speeches, we went out. So I put these two Im images in. I'm only going to use one. I'm just going to see which one works best as a double page spread. So we're just going to drag that one in. I actually prefer the walking away shot. So that's the one we're going to use. Now I could tilt it, but then they'll be on, on the wonk if I tilt that round. So we'll keep that as it is. Just double clicking to make sure we're in the safety margins of the software. And again, double page spread, possibly. I took it in. I don't think this one's going to work as well, so we'll just take that one out. This one is definitely going to work. There we go. So again, you can bring it in probably to about there. Bokeh toss is great. So again, we're going to put five images on this spread. And the good thing about it Again, knowing the spreads the way I know them, you can select that one. It's exactly the spread that I had in mind. Bring it over here, change it, so you can see 
the bouquet throw here, and then the mellow that ensued um, over here. So it's a lovely spread. So from there, straight into the first dance. So we're gonna, just going to put two images in and then go for a big double pace spread of the first dance. So we can bring it into here, but I actually quite like this, this spread there. So you just get the lights and everything that goes in. And then the party. So we're going to load this up. See how many more we've got. No, we're going to split these up a little bit more. Perfect. And again, we can go double post spread with the party so you can get a real feel of what actually happened. The good thing about double post spreads is this image would probably be lost if it was as small as this. So again, we're thinking about the album spread. We're thinking about everything that we're doing before we hit the shutter. It's a bit more party. We'll brag these guys in. Into here. Just going to change this around a little bit. And then she danced with her dad. But we're never going to close on the, the dad shot, so I'm probably actually going to bring the party shot to the last spread. And that's it. Done. 173 images, 78 pages done. So what I'll do now, I'll just go through and just make sure that we haven't got anything cut off. Uh, we'll go through and make sure everyone's where they should be and just tidy it up. But that's, that's just as quick and as simple as that. That's 173 images. So it's perfect. So this has now been um, designed. So what I would do now, the, as I mentioned before, the couple will always choose the final say, have the final say on their wedding album because it's, you know, this is my interpretation of their story, but it is their wedding day. They have the absolute right to change everything if they want, which, which sometimes happens, doesn't happen very often. But again, if they do change everything, we can do it in 20 minutes. It's, it's, it's you know, it's not that much of, a, of an issue. Um, the majority of it is, the, can we just change this? Can we move that around, swap that around? Actually, we prefer this image of, of me. So again, a couple of tweaks. So then what I will do, I will go to the little arrow on the top right up in here and export for Proofer. I use the Fundy online Proofer, which is absolutely fantastic. So here you'll click on the Proofer. That'll ask you where you want your uh, spreads to be saved. And it will save them as a very low res um, JPEG. So it's very quick to upload to the internet. I'll just hit select and that will just Export the images, you want them all, and export. So it'll export 39 spreads. So the couple have paid for 20 spreads initially, and this is going to be a proof of nearly double what they've, already, they've paid for. So they have two options. They can either say, yes, we love it, can we have all of these? Or they'll say, we can't quite afford that, can we make a few changes and bring the spreads down? Uh, ideally, we want to have as much as possible because this, we think, is the best use and the best story of their, of their wedding day. So, again, it's down to them. If they want to take some out, that's fine. But then we want to sell spreads, and we th well, we'll just say, look, this is, you know, you can take them out, but we feel this is the best story of your, of your day. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Dan and Rosie's wedding album from start to finish. You were there when we took the first photograph, and now you've seen me design their, their wedding album. Fundy Software is a great tool to use for pre-designing, which is exactly how we do our albums in the studio. They're going to get a book twice the size that they initially paid for, which we are up front and tell them exactly how we're going to do things right from the word go. So they'll have the final say. They'll say yes or no. Hopefully, it will just be a few changes, but the album will go to print uh, from Graphic Studio and come back looking absolutely beautiful. So thanks very much for coming out with me on the wedding. Thanks very much for watching this video. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here at the home of the Photographer Academy here in Wales, and uh, we hope to see you soon.